Why play Rock of Ages? Well, my name is Vanguard of Valor, and I'm going to do my best to help you answer that question. The short answer to why you should play Rock of Ages is that it's a fairly insane game about rolling an enormous boulder down a hill in an attempt to break down the gates of a castle and squash the historical figure within, who may very well happen to be King Leonidas, Leonardo da Vinci, or even the physical embodiment of the plague, who knows, while simultaneously trying to stop them from doing the same to you. In order to tell if this game is really for you though, we'll need to look at it in a bit more detail. Rock of Ages was released in September 2011 by Ace Team, the same people who created Xenoclash and Xenoclash 2, the world's premier alien punching simulators. While Rock of Ages and Xenoclash bear very few similarities, both games do bear the clear mark of Ace Team's distinctive take on visual design. With that said, let's take a look at how the game itself actually functions. A game of Rock of Ages is loosely broken into two parts, the building phase and the rolling phase. During the building phase, you get the opportunity to place various defenses on your side of the map to deter your opponent's boulders. These defenses come in a variety of forms, including aimed projectiles, walls, shovers, catapults, explosives, blowers, money makers, and turrets. Each of these structures come in three increasingly powerful and expensive tiers. Each defensive unit you place costs money, which can be earned during the rolling phase, as well as space on your slope, and this means that you have to build your defenses carefully, as larger defensive structures occupy many additional tiles around their own, making it harder to effectively stop your enemy with just those larger structures. A successful defense can slow the enemy's boulder so it hits your castle more softly, waste their time allowing you to hit their castle more often, or destroy their boulder entirely and force them to carve a new boulder from scratch and try again. This entire time, your citizens have been carving a new boulder for you to use, and from the moment they've completed the boulder, you can click on it to take yourself out of the tactical overview of your slope and into the rolling phase, an over the boulder view from which you can attempt to dodge, smash, and leap your way past the enemy's defenses. Your primary goal during this phase is to make your way to the enemy castle with as much speed as you can while taking as little damage as possible. The faster you're going when you hit their gates, and the less damage you've taken by that point, the weaker the gate will become. In order to give yourself the edge in this downhill onslaught, you can spend some of your hard-earned resources to upgrade your boulder for a single run. These upgrades can give your boulder an additional layer of armor, light it on fire causing it to deal additional damage, coat it in oil causing it to spoil terrain the enemy could otherwise build on, or give it the one-time ability to double jump. Additionally, during your downhill dash, crushing the houses and civilians you see along the way can help you to accumulate further resources to be used on building more defenses or on bringing more upgraded boulders to the fray. When the enemy gate finally does shatter, your boulder will be able to enter the enemy castle and squash their leader once and for all, allowing you to claim victory. The game's single-player campaign is a great way to learn the tricks and strategies you'll need to excel. As you progress through the levels, the various defensive tools are gradually unlocked, allowing you to experiment with them individually and learn their particular strengths and weaknesses. Each level of the campaign also takes place on a new slope, which gives you the opportunity to learn the best routes through them and the best spots in which to lay traps for your foes where they will do the most damage. Each course also features three keys for you to find during the rolling phase in order to progress to the later areas, and some of them can be quite challenging to reach without sabotaging your attack run. Each level has its own mildly insane and usually entertaining introductory cutscene in which you encounter the figure against whom you will be competing, and these short scenes are a nice addition to the gameplay. The one black mark on the campaign, however, is certainly the boss fights. These arena battles tend to be much more tedious than they are difficult, as damaging the bosses generally involves a great deal of timing and luck as opposed to the standard strategy involved in the rest of the game. Despite that problem, the single player campaign is certainly quite enjoyable. The Rock of Ages multiplayer experience is also quite interesting, although of the various modes available, War is the only one with any real replay value in my opinion. Ski Ball and Obstacle Race are fun to try once or twice, but they tend to get old fast, while War, on the other hand, is an excellent versus version of the main game. Placing your defenses against a human opponent requires a lot more thought, and outmaneuvering another player's carefully laid traps can be a lot more difficult and much more satisfying than otherwise. One major concern with this mode, however, is that it can be quite difficult to find opponents now, as the game does not have a particularly active multiplayer community anymore. The easiest way to counteract that issue, of course, is simply to play against your friends, and although split-screen play is not possible, it is fairly easy to set up online matches. While the art of Rock of Ages is also not of incredibly high fidelity, the style compensates for that concern in spades. The Monty Python-esque cutscenes are generally entertaining, and the cutout style reappears in-game as well with the Citizens of the Slopes. The courses themselves tend to be quite stylized and interesting, and the various courses differ enough visually to prevent them from growing too similar. The Rock of Ages soundtrack is also excellent. Its orchestral and choral elements fit the style of the game remarkably well, and are certainly a great addition. 
So, with all that said, why play Rock of Ages? Hopefully now you'll have the information you need to be able to answer that one for yourself. This has of course been Vanguard of Valor, thank you very much for watching, and please let me know in the comments below what you think about this review. Since I'm still getting used to this new review style, I'm very interested to know what you guys think about it. Thanks again folks, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.